My name is Troy Trigstead. I'm a practicing pharmacist. I'm a health economist. And I'm here to talk to you about a wall that is between you and the value you create for your patients and the rest of the healthcare system. A wall that may be preventing you from helping patients get better. A wall preventing sustainable community based pharmacy business models. The wall wasn't built intentionally. Rather, it's the result of rapid innovation in drug discovery. But that wall is now getting in the way. The modern version of the FDA was created in 1938. Back then, physicians and pharmacists worked together without barriers. Since then, we've had a steady increase in new drugs, exciting new drugs. They've transformed the practice of medicine, they've transformed the practice of pharmacy. By the 1980s, many, many, many more new drugs were coming to market, rapid acceleration, more drugs, more advanced drugs, more expensive drugs, treating more patients with chronic disease. Prior to this expansion in new drugs, the total healthcare spend in 1960, 10% of it was drug costs. But that began to increase, which created a market pressure to contain that cost. As a result, the pharmacy benefit was conceived, and the pharmacy benefit manager was born. This created a disconnect between pharmacies and the rest of the healthcare team. Nearly all of the things we don't like about the system today are a result of this separation. As PBMs evolved, they had to come up with new ways of generating revenue. Over time, we ended up with concepts like negotiated rates, pre authorizations, co payments, co insurance, formulary, maximum allowable cost, rebate programs, supplemental rebate programs, preferred mail order, onerous recoupment, and of course, direct and indirect remuneration fees. DIRs weren't the first brick in that wall, and they most certainly will not be the last. The problem is fundamental misalignment. So, on the pharmacy side of the industry, an arms race ensues to counter lower reimbursement rates. Pharmacies merge and consolidate to achieve lower costs and gain supply chain leverage. The focus becomes entirely on price and not outcomes. This leaves small community pharmacies like you struggling, fighting a losing battle in a game you were never meant to play. Meanwhile, in the rest of the healthcare system, There was an evolution of a similar type. Growing up in a fee for service model, being paid on volume of doing, also losing sight of making the patient better. Physicians and hospitals were getting paid for more exams, more tests, more surgeries, more hospitalizations, and ultimately more disease. As a result, our nation's health care bill increased dramatically. From 1960 until 2008, healthcare spend as a proportion of our gross domestic product increased from 4% to 17%. And we're heading toward 20%. That's 20 cents on every dollar in our entire economy towards healthcare. That is and remains completely unsustainable. The Congressional Budget Office has estimated that the entire federal budget will be consumed by healthcare. In 20 to 30 years. In response to all of these trends, purchasers of health care, principally taxpayers and employers, have pushed for a new payment system. So along comes payment reform, and we end up with concepts like 30 day readmission penalties, shared savings programs, bundled payments, merit based incentive payment, and alternative payment models, and narrow networks based on quality of care delivery. These new payment models are meant to focus not on doing more, not fee for service, but rather outcomes, creating an outcomes marketplace. The larger healthcare system has already started down this path. We are at the beginning of payment reform, not the end. Care team members are now looking across the street for help. You now have common cause with them. To make the patient better is the new business model. We are starting to have a national realization. We invest $300 billion in outpatient drugs. 
but we don't get nearly the return on that $300 billion that we could if we optimize the use of those drugs. So for this $3 trillion in healthcare spend, we still today only spend 10% of that on outpatient drugs, the same as it was in 1960. The outcomes marketplace will make medication use supports an investment and not a cost center. The healthcare system will call for help. They will call for your help. Payment reform cannot be successful without medication use supports. The average chronically ill Medicare recipient with multiple chronic illnesses sees 13 different prescribers in one year, fills 50 unique medications in that year, and is 100 times more likely to have a preventable hospitalization. For the past few decades, the focus has been on drug cost minimization at the expense of care delivery. For the next few decades, we'll see an ushering of new incentives to optimize drug use, where the left-hand side of the equation is an investment so that we can reduce the right-hand side of the equation. A pharmacist and a physician working together with the rest of the care team is transformative, but there are too many financial structures preventing this marriage. The only way to break down that wall is to come together. Then we can focus on the care team, then we can focus on care delivery, and then we can focus on the patient. The PBMs are playing the game, and they play it rough. But we need to start focusing on changing the game. Blame the system for not aligning the care team around the patient. The average complex patient sees their primary care doctor three and a half times a year. They go to your pharmacies 35 times a year. You are accessible. You are well positioned for med use supports. You are well positioned for coordination. You believe it or not, are the only lowest common denominator for med use supports in the entire system of care. In a 2011 Harvard Business Review article, they talk about two ways to have a successful business strategy. You can compete on price, or you can compete on differentiation. All of you will have difficulty competing on price. The price route requires purchasing leverage. This is about as effective as a four-year-old taking on a sumo wrestler. Differentiation, though, requires customized supports. Differentiation route requires local relationships. Differentiation route requires you to hone your care delivery craft. More outcomes creates more payment leverage. Differentiate yourselves by producing outcomes. That is a game you are meant to play. There's a fundamental change occurring in the marketplace, a bifurcation. On the upper right-hand side, we have complex patients and complex care. On the lower left-hand side, we have convenience care. Convenience care marketplace is low-risk patients that don't utilize a lot of resources. How can I get it very accessibly but very cheaply? On the upper right-hand side, we have complex care population that requires a different set of services, patient-centeredness, local relationships. You have the ability, the capacity, perhaps the privilege, of turning narrow networks on their head. You have local relationships, professional autonomy, programmatic agility. You can deliver on outcomes. This is your new business model, the medical outcomes narrow network. Remember the fundamentals. What is wrong with this diagram? The answer, there is no arrow between you and the entity that benefits most when you take care of your patients. Your patients want that arrow to exist. We use medications to prevent poor outcomes and downstream costs. 10% of the budget is a small price to pay. You are invested in your patients. You're invested in your communities. You are an investment, not a cost center. The opportunity to pivots now, the opportunity to do what feels right and good and effective is now. Be a good investment. Train for that race for better outcomes. Refocus your energy and your efforts. If you do, you will thrive in the new system of care. 
You don't need to wait on regulators. You don't need to wait on payers. Care team members need you now. You can build sustainability now. This is why we formed an organization called CPESN. The Community Pharmacy Enhanced Services Network was formed to help community pharmacies like you join together and take advantage of the changes that are happening in the healthcare marketplace. By helping community pharmacies to organize efforts, we will help each other know the value, express your value, and leverage your value. There's lots of value being produced in this room. It needs to be expressed correctly and optimally to the rest of the system. CPSN USA has already started. Our goal is to build a nationwide network of local CPSN networks focused on quality assurance, quality improvement, and practice transformation. We will train you for this race, and it will be about you, not us. By, of, and for community-based pharmacies. I'm really looking forward to working with all of you over the next three years. Thank you for your time.